Another round is brought to you by Wink. Get wines that are tailored to your palate delivered right to your door. Go to trywink.com slash another round and you'll receive $20 off your first order plus complimentary shipping. That's T-R-Y-W-I-N-C dot com slash another round. Hey! What up, what up? My goodness. Okay, all right, all right. Settle Settle down, down. settle down. Hi, Heaven. Hi, Tracy. What's up, girl? So we're going to start the show off like we normally do. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Heaven. I'm Tracy. And welcome to another round with Heaven and Tracy. Yo, what's up, Chicago? Hi, Chicago. How y'all doing? We are live here at Talia Hall. Um... I have to say really quickly, and I promise I'm not going to dwell on it, I keep forgetting how attractive everybody in this city is. Facts. Facts. Also, accurate, accurate. Y'all, it's, it's a problem. I'm ovulating in like three days. I got to get out. I got to go. I got to go. I want to uh, <laughs> give a huge thanks to WBEZ's <laughs> podcast passport series for bringing us here. Mm-hmm. They're bringing all sorts of live podcast shows from all over the country to Chicago. So I'm excited. Are you? Why are you excited? What's on the show? What's we going have on? a lot on the show. Can I, can I, can I tell a joke maybe? Yeah. That's a yes. I don't know what your answer was going to be, but that's I a yes. I will allow Tracy to tell yeah. a little joke. But guess Fantastic. what? We also have. Who? What? <laughs> we have a jam packed show, okay. including sociologist e viewing, <laughs> singer extraordinaire Jamila Woods. Mm-hmm. We have a fantastic show. Thank you all for coming out. We are going to get right to it. So I'm very excited for our next guest. Me too, me too, me too, me too. Who is it? We have the honor and privilege of bringing to the stage one of Chicago's leading sociologists. She went to the University of Chicago, got her master's, yes, got her master's in education policy and management from Harvard. You know how, you know how Crystal often says to people who are just accomplishing too much to pick a sleigh? Yeah. She needs to pick one Accurate. thing to dominate. Accurate, you're right, there's more though, there's more. Then she got her PhD from Harvard, and now she's a professor at the University of Chicago School of Social whoop, whoop. Service Administration. Welcome to the stage, e viewing everybody. Yeah. Um, hey, hey girl. girl. Hey. hey, what up, Chicago? Hey. Can I tell y'all a secret? Yes. Chicagoans love Chicago so much, you can just say Chicago and everyone will flip. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. Yeah. I told you. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. I researched that. That's I see. I, yeah. I'm sure that you researched many, many things. <laughs> Um, we really wanted you here because we really wanted somebody who could like give us a good picture of what Chicago is really like. Because we can't talk to or listen to y'all's little president at all. <laughs> um, so he stays having Chicago in his mouth though. He do, he do, but he don't want to come here. He mm-hmm. don't because he, he knows here. better. Yeah, yeah. He knows that the yeah. top gang thugs yeah. are gonna find him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, accurate. So talk to me about your experience in Chicago public schools. Yeah. And how did that experience shape the way that you think about like race and equality in Chicago today? Oh, thanks for asking. Um, so I grew up in Chicago public schools. Um, shout out to all my CPS babies. Grew up going to Chicago public schools and after I graduated, I became a teacher um, mm-hmm. on the South Side. Come this on, South Side, come on. Before the show, I told them this is gonna be the nicest, sweetest audience you'll ever have. Best. So I became a teacher, um, and, and growing up, I got to see the inequality within the city. Um, Chicago is very, very segregated, as you may have heard mm-hmm. and also witnessed in your shout time Shout out here. to the Midwest. Yeah, and... Um, <laughs> and Sad shout out, I know. So even as a kid, I witnessed the differences in the kind of education I got versus what my peers got when mm-hmm. I was on the basketball team and we went to another school and saw what they had. Mm-hmm. Um, what even, were the biggest differences? 
Um, everything from funding, uh, from facilities, and also uh, I went to a magnet school, and so I grew up in an all Mexican and Puerto Rican neighborhood called mm. Logan, well, at the time, called Logan Square. Uh, I remember Logan Square. Yes. A big unshout out to gentrification, but uh, <laughs> big, big negative, big, big boo to gentrification. But so, so, and, and my family is one of the only black families in the, in the neighborhood. So we would get on, I would get on the bus and it would be the all Mexican and Puerto Rican kid bus. And we would come to school mm-hmm. and then all the white kids that walked to school would arrive from, and other white kids from their bus. Right. So it was a way of seeing like people coming from all different parts of the city. And then when I became a teacher, I really witnessed how, um, no matter how hard I worked or how hard my colleagues worked or how hard the kids worked, Mm -hmm. um, there were somehow unseen forces beyond us that were making what I thought were really bad decisions. Mm. And so that really is what shaped my, thank you. So that's really kind of what what has shaped my my work thereafter is thinking about how race and racism impacts um, the everyday lives of children who are babies who deserve great things wherever they come from or whoever they are. What? What are, what are some things we should know about Chicago public schools right now? Yeah, so, so one thing is we are a very segregated school system. We are also a very broke school system. It's, mm. uh, CPS is hundreds of millions of dollars in debt, um, some of which is arguably avoidable. Um, and many people in the city have called for Rahm Emanuel to use some of his connects in the financial world to call for... Um, That's Mayor Ron yes. Manuel. Well, <laughs> y'all's, y'all's little mayor. Y'all a mayor. <laughs> y'all's little mayor. You better uh, put a little on that. Only mayor I recognize is Washington. <laughs> uh, but... And then I guess another important thing to know is just that um, this is a city and a, and a set of schools full of beautiful, wonderful, brilliant children and families that love them and teachers that work really hard. And all of us are doing our best every day. You know, we always say, like, when you see a kid, that's, that's, that kid is doing their best, and that family is sending you the best kid they have, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of what I try to do is offer narratives that go against a lot of the stereotypes that people like uh, old dude in the White House uh, <laughs> use to talk about our old children and, and our kids. You know, that dude, old, that old dude. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just I think it's really important to push against those things. Yeah. So, speaking of y'all's little president in the White House... I don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. Yes. I've only heard of her. Um, but he, he has never been here, right? Or since uh, he's Well, he office. came. Well, what happened was... No, since... <laughs> yeah. He, he came during the campaign, and uh-huh. he came to the UIC Pavilion. Um, and, you know... The thing about Chicago is it's a lot of black people here. Uh-huh. It's a lot of Latinx people here. Uh-huh. It's a lot of immigrants here. Uh-huh. And a lot of people that have spent a century fighting for justice and developing labor and organization activist tactics. You may have heard of the 9 to 5 work day. Uh, that's courtesy of, of us. Chicago. Right? So we have a very strong activist community. And we also kind of like to fight. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Swear up. Uh, like, you know, it. throw I these hands. So, uh, so he came and he did not stick around. Um, mm. And that was that. Mm. So, so here's my question. Yes. Here's my question. He is a man who always has something to say about this spot. Mm-hmm. But you can tell that he doesn't know anything about this spot. Accurate. If I was y'all's little president, <laughs> what would you say to me? Like, what would you want me to know most about your city? <laughs> Uh, well, the first thing I thought is that that vine of that little girl that's like, when I'm not around, you want to keep <laughs> doing this. <laughs> but when I come around, when I around you don't ever want to stroll post up. up. Right, post up. <laughs> <laughs> that's my message to the president. Mm. I want to post up. Um, post up. But um, I think my message to him is, it, you know, this is this is one of the most quintessential American cities in the most beautiful ways and the most ugly ways. It's a deeply racist city, deeply oppressive city, also deeply beautiful, diverse, and um, there are a lot of people here fighting for justice. And so if um, by some miracle there was like a Freaky Friday situation and a person with some sense occupied his body, <laughs> like a lightning bolt hit the White House <laughs> a child at midnight sense. on a full moon, yeah, Only. and like he switched bodies with like a kid who was on a field trip to the White House. <laughs> yes! Um, yes. This is just a 90s movie called like I was like teen president, right? <laughs> like, 
Whoops, like, I'm the president. Yeah, whoops, I'm the president. Uh-oh. But uh, yeah, if that were to happen and he somehow grew some natural sense overnight, I, I would tell him, yeah, come through and learn something. Mm-hmm. Until then, stay away. <laughs> yeah, don't come here. Okay, okay. A lot of people know you as a, a person who thinks a lot about higher education, education policy, but you're also a poet. Accurate, yes. An artiste. Um, you co-produce the Chicago Poetry Block Party and co-direct the Emerging Poets Incubator, where poets come to Chicago for four days to figure out how to bring poetry back into their communities. Ooh, BuzzFeed got that good producer research. Hey. <laughs> Shout out usually to everybody I, who thinks we don't do actual work to yeah. make the show. I usually do interviews and people are like, so, your last name is pronounced how? Mm-hmm. Like, okay. But Dang. we're just like, when you yeah. were seven years old, right. way back when. <laughs> right. But yeah, you mentioned a Audre Lorde line about poetry is not a luxury. What does that mean to you? Yeah, thank you. Wow. Um, I've actually been wanting to get that tattoo um, for most of this month. So had I prepared, I would have been like, You'd be like, damn. Um, That's so beautiful. (laughs) Um, You know, that comes from a really short essay that I highly recommend everybody read. And it's Mm. kind of like a paradoxical statement because for many people, poetry is a luxury, right? Like people are struggling every day. They feel like it's something that they don't have access to. But if you don't think about poetry as being like this elite thing that mm. lives in certain books and you have to take special classes to understand it and you know poetry is like old people sitting in a room looking wistfully out a window and thinking oh, their thoughts and writing them down you know like um, as someone I don't mean to interrupt but as no. someone who was in a graduate poetry program for two months oh a solid two oh. a solid two. Oh wow roughest two months you. of my life yeah. let me tell you but go your ahead. therapist got a bonus for that one <laughs> Yeah, Um, but that's not what poetry is. Poetry started uh, thousands of years ago of people standing around telling stories around a fire. It's a rich oral tradition of storytelling and self-expression. And so um, I think that poetry is for everybody. It's not a luxury. It's something that is is within us all the time. And a lot of the work I try to do and um, very much like in community with other great people in the city is trying to realize that dream of saying like poetry is something that you can just do on your block or mm-hmm. where you are. And uh, poet, po- a poet is a person in your neighborhood, right? Like the Sesame Street song. Like, yeah. we're just regular people. I love that. Aww. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, shout out. So we interviewed Joy Reid on the show. Ooh. It was a fantastic interview. I highly recommend it. And we asked her what she was most optimistic about underneath Trump's administration. She works at MSNBC and has to cover the the news every day. She can't get away from it. So I'm just like, girl, what's the strong point? Like, what are we looking forward to? And she said... Yeah, tell me what she said. She (laughs) said that the arts would flourish under Trump. Okay. Um, But you also wrote that authoritarians attack the arts first. Mm. Yeah. What is the art that we need right now, given the current political climate? Oh, that is a great question. Um, You know, I think that there's like, uh, I have several friends that are people of color, artists, especially poets, say that they heard from white colleagues things like, now our art is going to be political. Right. Ooh, like wow. now we're going to protest, which is um, now we're going to do it. now we're going to do it, <laughs> which is so erroneous um, that it's laughable um, because, you know, obviously people of color, people with disabilities, queer people, trans people, people who are writing from margins of society have been writing politically resistant art, mm-hmm. music, film, literature, theater forever and ever since the beginning of time. Mm. And so I don't think it's that like now folks are going to step up and start writing like, there once was a man named Trump. He <laughs> had an unpleasant rump or something like that. I, wrote, I came up with that just now. I, have, I went to school for that. Bars. <laughs> I went to school for that. Uh, yeah, I'm also out of ump words, so the poem is over. I think you got the important <laughs> Yeah, right. Let's throw him in the dump. Okay. Um, but we need a third stanza. We'll workshop that after the second. Yeah. Um, it's, so it's not that we need to start doing this like new thing that we haven't been doing, but rather I think we all need to be attentive to uplifting the voices of people who've been doing that work. And that also means looking across to communities that are not our own, right? So, um, and, and really forming, I think, true solidarity, if it's possible, between peoples that have different experiences but all face oppression in the United mm. States can come through art, mm. right? And can come through understanding, you know, a cis person understanding a trans person experience and a Christian person understanding a Muslim's experience. Mm. And um, so I hope that we can really look around and be attentive to the art that's been happening and uplift it. That's right. beautiful. Thank you. 
So while we have you here, yes, it is amazing that we have an expert such as yourself on the stage. Oh gosh, mm-hmm. we want to play a little game called Six Degrees of Education Policy. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> So you're familiar with Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yes. It's similar. I heard, I heard Gene play this. I did my... I yes. did my Gene yes. Gomby of NPR yes. played Six Degrees of... Shout out to Pulse Bougie. Yes. yes. Um, we're going to take the most important headlines in style pop culture today and find out how they're actually deeply connected to education policy. Okay, mm-hmm. and I want everyone to know I did not prepare for this. I have not been Wonderful. given the things in advance. Yes, so she has not been given any of the topics in advance. Yeah. yeah. We, we just believe pulled random Cincinnati. headlines. Okay. Yeah. Um, I ready? am the keeper of these headlines. Oh, snap. Okay. Um, I love I'm this so graphic scared. also. <laughs> Six there degrees of, of education, education policy. policy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Dream game so, show. You will have two minutes okay. per headline. Is there a timer? There Maybe. sure will be. Okay. I don't All work right. here. Yes, okay, Eleanor cool. says yes. Okay. Um, first headline. Eleanor, are we ready? And I have six. Is, is it inclusive? Like, is the sixth one, can the sixth one be ed policy? Six. I have six steps. Six degrees. Oh, oh I just have oh. two minutes. I was like, what are you talking about, girl? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have two minutes to walk us through the connections. <laughs> okay. Please talk us through your journey so we understand where you're going. And yes. do I have as many steps or do it got to be six? As many as six. Okay. So it doesn't have okay. to be six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. we can get there quicker. Okay. All right. Headline this number fine. one. We're fine. All right. What headline no, we got? It's, it's fine. It's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Headline number one. Okay. Beyonce gives birth to her Gemini twins. How is that related to education policy? Yes. Okay, so it's actually <laughs> unconfirmed by Beyonce herself that she gave birth to the true. twins. This is true. I personally don't believe it till I see it on her Instagram. Yes. Facts. Um, that is so, where all news comes from. Uh, yes, unconfirmed facts tell us that knowledge is socially constructed, mm. and it's mm. difficult to know what is true depending on okay. the source. Okay. Uh, a case in which this is exemplified is mm. in the production of textbooks in the United States. Ooh. You got a drag textbooks. Textbooks be lying. Okay. <laughs> textbooks be lying. Uh, the largest, the state that is the largest purchaser of textbooks in the United States is Texas, the Lone Star State. All right, Texas. My people are really out here, like, it's Texas. Yes. <laughs> Texas. What? And as such, Texas and their social predilections has a disproportionate impact on the things that end up in textbooks. Mm. Which is an example of why we need locally controlled education in order to have the truths that reflect our own communities. From Texas, yeah! also. Yo. Yo. <laughs> that was the finishing move. You, I brought you all my cousins of bonus. The show. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? She was like, "Wait, I'm not done." Additionally, bonus. <laughs> Appendix also. A. In addition yeah. to, furthermore, yeah. henceforth and whatnot. <laughs> I love, I love that that headline mentioned the twins were Geminis. Yes. Important. I too am a Gemini. Shout out to Gemini. Um, and I look forward to Beyonce independently confirming the existence of the twins. All right. All right. Until okay. then. Until then. Okay, okay next nothing. headline. Katy Perry apologizes for cultural appropriation. How is that related Do that one. to education Do that policy? One. Okay. Do that one. <laughs> Okay, Katy Perry uh, grew up in a very religious, white, Christian household. I believe, I do not have internets here with me, but I believe she may have actually been homeschooled. Um, no? Facts? Any Katy Perry fans? No Katy Perry fans. Okay. <laughs> not a lot of crossover with that audience. But I will say, I do know definitively that she grew up in a, in a very conservative Christian household. Mm-hmm. Um, conservative Christian families are among the most frequent homeschoolers in the United States. Okay. Um, and 
Uh, states make provisions for people to homeschool their children and meet some minimal criteria. Some states and some localities do a better job of enforcing this than others. Mm -hmm. Um, which means that when people design curriculum and make mandates about how schools have to run, they have to account for a growing and increasingly diverse homeschool population, which is an education policy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. A lot of black people, believe it or not, people are fed up with the schools. (laughs) Surprise, plot twist. The timer went away. I don't know if that means that it... I, no, I you're okay. well under time. Okay, great. That's what yeah. that means. Woo. Okay, good. You don't even need the timer. Good. You got it. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the soothing ticks have returned. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure nobody gave you these headlines? On no, no. Like that, that was just... I was worried... Yeah, never mind. Let me not jinx myself. Let's go on. Y'all, you got it. Uh, okay, two points. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Third and final headline. Of course, we saved the best one for last. Oh, Are you no. nervous? Yes, very. You shouldn't be. You're going to kill it. Okay. So, Jimmy Carter shakes hand with every person on flights. <laughs> to reiterate, oh, no. Jimmy what? Carter is 109 years old. He got on an airplane and shook everybody's hand. Oh, okay. So, this is not something he does. This is not like the habitual be. Like, he be shaking people's hands. I don't is that know. he did it one time? So we know once. that I'm on so this scared. particular flight, okay. I don't know if it happens on every flight he's on. Probably. He's cute and Southern, and he'd just be like, hi, hi. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, okay go. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, Jimmy Carter shaking every person's hand is frightening because that seems like a way of conveying communicable diseases. So right? many germs. On a flight. On so a many flight. germs. Uh, viruses, bacterial illnesses, the Zika, mm-hmm. et cetera. Et cetera. The Zika. So... Um, <laughs> Another place where communicable diseases are a frequent threat are our schools. And in recent years, there's been a resurgence of things like mumps and measles, uh, rubella, other things that we thought we had got rid of because uh-huh. we got the vaccines and we don't have the polio no more. And, <laughs> but people decided that they wanted to have free range chicken and no vaccines for some reason. I don't understand this. Please, everyone, if you're listening, please vaccinate your children. <laughs> please, 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 uh, please vaccinate please. your children. And we've also, oh, recently in the Chicago suburbs have an epidemic of whooping cough for the same reason. So um, it is important. That is why schools mandate that children get vaccinations at certain key years, which is a difficult educational policy to negotiate when people say that it is against their beliefs to vaccinate their children. Um, that is a thorny educational policy issue. I feel like those were all one degree. Like you killed. Yeah, that. you didn't even need all six degrees. You did not. You did you not know. need six degrees. You, you were like, let me a half a degree. You can keep the rest. <laughs> I mean, the first one there was like Texas. <laughs> okay, two degrees Texas. for the okay, first one. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Eve Ewing Thank has you. won. Doctor Eve Ewing. A delight and a Thanks. joy and a gem and so important to so many people including oh, me girl where can people find you in your work uh, you can find me 34 hours a day on Twitter uh, <laughs> my Twitter name is my government name Eve E-V-E Ewing E-W-I-N-G but what Some is people, your handle my, I, I'm I also aka Wikipedia Brown hey. is, my, is my nickname best Twitter handle ever that's best what they call me on the streets I was walking down the street someone was like excuse me excuse me Wikipedia Brown. <laughs> yes, hello. Um, yeah, so you can find me there. I have a website. You can Google me. Um, that's about that. Do you have any books you want to? Oh, yes. Oh. Shout out that oh, you boy. also wrote. <laughs> Why, thanks. Boy, I'm bad at that. Huh? Um, I have a book that is coming out in September. It's called Electric Arches. Um, it's so good. It it's is so pretty. They, yes, they have seen the book. It is good, so according to independent third-party sources. True. Confirm. It's true. Confirm, Which you true. can verify, unlike the existence of Beyonce's babies. Exactly. <laughs> uh, independently can confirm everyone. that the book is good. Um, and you can pre-order it uh, wherever fine books are sold. And I will be on tour at a place near you coming this fall. Yes. So, yes. yes. Eve, thank you Give so much. Give it up, much. y'all. Love yes. you.
Um, hi, Heaven. Hi, Jesse. <laughs> what's, what's up? How you doing? Uh, chill, you know, I have I'm a doing question. the show. <laughs> I, have, I have a question for you. What's up? Do you know what time it is? What Do y'all know what time, what time it is? is it? <laughs> I think it's Tracy's job time. I will allow it. Yay. Okay, y'all, let's see if we can make Heaven laugh. Heaven okay. has not heard this wow. joke yet. So I've been avoiding this joke all rehearsal. <laughs> She was like, no, you don't have to do the whole thing. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but now you're a captive audience. Yes, okay. I'm excited. Okay, so everyone knows that I identify heavily as a Southerner. Shout out to the South. <laughs> but I also identify as a Midwesterner because Louisville, where I'm from, is... <gasps> oh, my God! Do not get me hype right now. <laughs> I'm looking at a timer and I'm getting in trouble. <laughs> Don't do this. Okay. Um, I also identify as a Midwesterner because Louisville is like two hours from every Midwestern city. Chicago, uh, uh, Indianapolis, et cetera, et cetera. The other ones. I'm sorry. The other I'm so ones. sorry. Um, so this joke is a tribute to both the South and the Midwest okay. because you can amend the main character to be either Southern or Midwestern. I'm listening. All okay. Right. All right. So, I'm intrigued. All right. Let me turn around. So... Um, so there's this girl heaven, right? <laughs> like we ain't even so there's a girl from the, this is, I'm gonna do it. There's right. a girl from the Midwest, right? Um, she hops on an airplane. Okay. She's gonna go take a trip to wherever. Hasn't been on an airplane before. From the Midwest, so she's very friendly. She believes in treating people nicely. <laughs> If you're gonna be sitting next to somebody for hours upon hours, you know, you acknowledge them, you let them know that you see them, right, right, as someone in the audience said, right. So, this girl gets on the plane, and there's a woman sitting next to her, and the woman is very poshly dressed. Okay. She's an older woman. She's got, like, all this, like, jewelry on, and her nails are manicured perfectly, and she's got on these glasses that sit on the end of her nose, so you know she's an asshole. <laughs> It's a particular angle that you need, yes. though, because not everybody who wears their glasses yes. like that. But this lady was an asshole. I feel it. She I had the asshole it. angle of the glasses, right? <laughs> but our girl from the Midwest, she's like, you know what? I'm on this airplane. She's, like, sitting towards the back. Okay. So it would take a long time for people to board. So she's just sitting next to this woman for what feels like hours. <clears throat> Fun fact. I did not ride on an airplane that had, like, the three seat aisles until, like... <laughs> until like four years ago. <laughs> so I'm used to very smart airplanes. Not important, I just wanted y'all to know that about me. Anyway, so she's sitting down next to this lady and she's like, oh, I should strike up a conversation because we're here and we're humans and we have mouths and we can talk to each other. Sure, sure. And so the girl from the Midwest says, <laughs> so the girl from the Midwest looks at the woman who's very poshy dressed and she says, hi, my name is Shauna. Because Shauna sounds like a good Midwestern name. Are there any Shaunas in the house tonight? Shauna? Shauna? Bueller? If you Bueller? are here, Bueller? we appreciate you. Anyone? <laughs> okay, but I saw a hand. It's okay. Even if you're lying, I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> so, so Shauna looks at the woman. She says, um, hi, my name is Shauna. Man, I can't believe how big this airplane is. I'm leaving the Midwest for the first time. I'm very excited. Etc. cetera, et cetera. Sure. Small talk. And so then she says to the woman, where are you from? Innocuous question, right? Where are you from? People ask that every day. And so the woman looks at her and she says, young lady, I am from a place where we know better than to end our sentences with a preposition. Oh. That bitch, right? Right? <laughs> so, um, so Shauna looks at her and she's like, oh, okay. And she thinks about it and she's like, I could punch her in the mouth. <laughs> Solid option one. But I'd probably get kicked off the flight. Mm. I'm trying to go live life and see the world. She's like, or I can continue to be nice and polite as my good Midwestern <laughs> parents <laughs> raised me to be. <laughs> so, so Shauna is at first offended, but then she collects herself. And then she says, oh, okay, well, let's try this again. And the woman says, yes, if we're going to have a conversation, we should try this again. What? Start over. And so Shauna says, okay, we'll try this again. <clears throat> Where you from, bitch? <laughs> yes, yes. Shout out to Shauna in the Midwest. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. 
Yes, trust me. It was me so happy. It was so worth you, it, just for that ending. Oh, Evan liked the joke. The show's over. Good night. <laughs> wait, no, wait. We're going home. We're going home. Tracy, that was delightful. Thank you. Wait, Thank you bitch. so much. <laughs> Off the tongue. You know, usually I like when it. I tell that joke, it's about a girl from Kentucky, so I can exaggerate <laughs> the accent and I can say, "Well, where y'all from, bitch?" <laughs> but Midwest works too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, friends, we're gonna take a quick little break. We gotta go by. We'll be back. We're coming back. It's cool. Support for Another Round comes from Wink, the monthly wine club that delivers unique and interesting wines based on your own personal taste. You can get started by taking their palette profile quiz at trywink.com slash another round. That's Wink spelled W-I-N-C. So if you're wondering if I would ever use a service like this because I identify mostly in public as a bourbon drinker, the answer is a resounding yes. I love wine, but something that really bothers me with my neighborhood living in Brooklyn is that my local liquor store does not carry rosé, and I have no idea why. So what I'm not going to do is hop a train and go to the next neighborhood to get a bottle of rosé, but what I would do is sign up with Wink so that I can have rosé brought to me on my couch to my door, and I don't even have to put on pants except to answer the door because that would be weird if I didn't do that. So... Right now, Wink is offering $20 off and complimentary shipping on your first order when you go to trywink.com slash another round. Once again, that's $20 off your first order, plus you get complimentary shipping. Just go to trywink.com slash another round to get started today. My name is Sister Ola Mae Bullworth. <laughs> and I'm here with Sister Odella, G- Odella Jenkins. <laughs> How you doing, Sister Odella? <laughs> One, I love my name. <laughs> really living it up. Welcome, everybody, to the First Corinthian Leather Church of God in Christ and Obama. <laughs> Welcome to this beautiful, blessed day. We are having a a sanctified service, but we got some notes to go over. Mm. And also, if you cannot read what my fan says, it says I am a public radio fan. Hey, shout out to WBEZ. I get it. I get it, I get it, and I will allow it. Y'all so keep... you'll allow that joke, but not mine. That's fine. <laughs> That's not what we're here to talk about. So we have some church announcements to run through today. Super quick, super fast. Um, become aware of a problem Uh oh. that problem is that y'all don't listen <laughs> okay okay uh you hear me when i speak mm. when i tell you what the church needs you hear me but you don't listen mm. you don't feel me amen? amen y'all grew up in church that's why i fuck with y'all uh so since y'all won't listen to me when i tell you what <laughs> since y'all won't listen to sister ola may <laughs> I got it, I can do it. <laughs> we will get through this as a family. As a church. <laughs> so, since you won't listen to me when I'm giving the church announcements, perhaps you will listen to somebody with a more heavenly voice, okay. if you will let me use the pun. Um, so, we are gonna bring out someone who sings like an actual Yeah, that's angel. not me, I hope that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Sister Jamila Woods. Yes. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, Sister Woods, how you doing? Hey, Sister Tracy. How your grandbaby's doing? That's good, that's good. So, 
For those of us in the audience who can take our medicine straight, no chaser, I will be giving the church announcements per usual. Okay. But for those of y'all who need a little, who need a little sugar in your in your medicine, I didn't want to use medicine twice. I didn't workshop this part. Um, we have for you an actual trained singer who will sing for you the heart of the messages that I will be relaying to you. Okay. Hopefully, between the two of us, y'all will start acting right. <laughs> and get your lives together. Also, as a church lady, I don't know if this is legal. <laughs> we'll worry about that later. Okay. You ready, Sister Ola May? Sister Woods, oh, oh, Ola May was born ready, okay? <laughs> I was born with church announcements in my hands. Sister Woods, you ready? I'm ready. All right, okay, first up, we need to talk about potato salad, y'all. Uh, y'all already know, y'all already know, okay. I need everyone to know that we are closing in on whoever keeps making the potato salad at all of the church functions. We've already asked you to stop. <laughs> As food is clearly not your ministry. <laughs> and that's fine. That's fine. Everybody's good at something, praise the Lord. Nobody's good at everything. This is just not your thing. Uh, and we, we closing in on you. We gonna catch you before the next function. We gonna find you before the anniversary. It's gonna happen. Listen, Sister Lou Ellen still cannot be more than five feet away from the bathroom and it has been two months. <laughs> two months. Madness, <laughs> foolishness, <laughs> outrage. <laughs> I'm so angry. <laughs> so please, please turn yourself in and stop this madness. It's great that you want to help the church, but maybe just bring the plates and napkins instead. Instead. Plates and napkins, y'all, plates and napkins. Listen, you can't, you can't you have a dinner it. without plates. You are can't still saying nothing about plates and napkins. You are still important if you stop <laughs> making this potato salad. <laughs> Number two, now we got to talk about the pastor's parking space. Mm. I didn't want to have to do it, sister. I didn't want to have to take it here today. We're having a good time, but listen. We definitely know now who has been parking <laughs> in the pastor's spot thanks to a new technology called license plates. We know who you are. <laughs> However, yo, why are there so many mysteries at this church? <laughs> who made the potato salad? Who's one parking in the... <laughs> I don't know, but you know what? However, we're gonna give you a chance to do the holy thing and turn yourself in. We understand that your mother's in a wheelchair. We get it. However, the pastor's wife just had bunion surgery. And she don't like using her cane because it makes her feel old. Who are me to judge, okay? So please, please do the right thing. Blessed are those with bunions for their walk is the hardest. Mm. The hardest. Mm. <laughs> well, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Shout out to Bunyans. Hey, man, shout out to Bunyans. <laughs> is that what we do? <laughs> shout out to Bunyans. Okay, and our third and... Oh, oh, hey, hey, whoa, hey. The spirit just came up and knocked me down. Okay. Our final announcement is for the It's Lit Surgical Dancers. <laughs> I laughed at this through every rehearsal, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the last time we are going to tell you that Millie rocking and backing that thing up are inappropriate in your routines, as this is a church. <laughs> also, some of y'all twerking have terrible form. <laughs> We're not doing that here at First Corinthian Leather. Either learn how to isolate those gluteuses, or you need to sit your little fast tails down. You can do the 99 and the 2000. Just don't do it up in here. <laughs> in here. Well, the nine, nine, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and that concludes our church announcements for the week. Please heed them and please turn yourselves in and give God an Obama holy hand clap of praise. <laughs> Is
Is my hair okay? Yeah, what's happening with my hair? You good, you good. You a little fuzzy on one side, but you can't help it. It's okay, nobody can tell. Thank you. (laughs) And now, that angelic voice again, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. A Chicago-born and raised vocalist and poet. Yes, yes. I, I personally first heard her angelic vocals on Chance the Rapper. Shout out! Sunday Candy, you may have heard of it. Shout out to you, Chance the Rapper. Yes, you may have also heard her on Coloring Book with Blessings. Jam. Jam. You can check out her poetry in a variety of anthologies, including the Breakbeat Poets, New American Poetry, and the Age of Hip Hop. She's currently the Associate Director for Young Chicago Authors, an organization she came up through herself where she now enters youth in the city. And her soulful, like, forward-thinking sort of approach to art really attracted us. That's mm-hmm. how we found her. <laughs> so give it up for Jamila Woods, y'all. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Um, hi. 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 We're so <laughs> starstruck, but we're trying to hold it together. Right. Uh, I think we're doing it okay. <laughs> So, Sister Woods, <laughs> your background is actually singing in the church. Yes, I started singing in the church. Perhaps in not the these church, church announcements. Not exactly, <laughs> not but exactly. not too far off. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that background. Um, well, I started singing in the Sunshine Band, which was the children's choir in Lilydale First Baptist Church. Wait, what was the church name? I was called Lilydale First Baptist. And, Lily Dale. Mm-hmm. It was just little kids who we couldn't really sing on the right notes, but <laughs> my grandma said it was to bring sunshine into the old folks' lives, so that's, that's why we are singing. Yeah. So, something that I always wonder when you hear about uh, people who have been singing forever and ever and ever since they were little, did you start singing because you wanted to, or because somebody was like, you have a good voice, you should get in this choir? Mm. Or no. if you don't sing, we're going to have problems. No one would have said I had a good voice, necessarily. I just love singing. Mm. And I sang until I sounded good. I didn't sound good What do you mean by that? Is that all you have to do? I'm close. Yeah, what? Well, that is what I believe, actually. Like, working at Young Chicago Authors all the time, like what Eve was saying, Mm. we tell young people, like, you don't have to believe poetry is what you think it is. Mm. Similarly, you don't have to believe a singer is what you think it is. Everyone has the potential to be an artist. I believe that. Words. So you went to Brown for college. Yes. What was that like? Who laughs? (laughs) (laughs) What are you doing right now? Uh, (laughs) And at Brown, you got your degree in Africana Studies and Theater and Performance Studies, right? right? And then came back to Chicago yes. and we want to hear you talk about why you came back to Chicago you could have gone anywhere with those degrees why Chicago true I had a really good um, a guest speaker came in um, named Daniel Alexander Jones and they were giving advice to the class and I was like where should I go New York or LA because that's where everyone in my mm. class is going mm-hmm. and I was just talking about where I was from and Daniel was just like it sounds like you should go back to Chicago because you're just talking about Louder Than a Bomb and all this great community. Um, And so I just realized that, you know, I could grow my wings here. And that's what um, something that, you know, in New York or L.A., sometimes it's hard for a young artist to kind of get their grounding there. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's good kind of like the poet Gwendolyn Brooks always said, look at what's under your nose. And Mm. I think I had a lot of resources here in the city that I didn't recognize until I came back. Mm. Mm. So what has been under your nose? Well, I realized that Chicago, I don't know if other cities are like this too, but in Chicago, the poetry and the music communities are very intersected. So before I even had the confidence to call myself a singer, Mm -hmm. I had this great community of poets. You know, my my first open mics, I kind of gained the confidence in my voice as a poet before I, you know, was confident as a singer. And so coming back to Chicago, I did my first music shows at poetry audiences, and that was really affirming because Mm -hmm. it kind of 
was an audience of people who were listening to my lyrics and were, you know, were kind of really listening in a fuller way almost mm-hmm. than concerts where a lot of people are talking or you know drinking and that's cool but it was really special to me to have my first shows as a musician to poetry audiences because it was just a kind of a deeper listening that made me take my my lyrics and my music more seriously mm. Mm. you're working on a project about the life of Gwendolyn Brooks yes can you actually, tell us a little bit more about what that is <laughs> give us the exclusive <laughs> um, it's a collaboration between the Poetry Foundation and Crescendo Literary, which is Eve's organization, and Manual Cinema. And it's going to be a. Th- it, Manual Cinema is so dope because it's like shadow puppetry Ooh, with yeah. live theater, Ooh. and there's going to be live music. That's and amazing. my sister and I are writing the music for the show based off of the script that Eve and our friend Nate wrote. Um, so hopefully it's going to be a whole new representation of Gwendolyn Brooks's life that I don't think has been done before. So mm. it's coming out in the fall. Ooh! Yes! I'm so excited. So in my head, poetry and music come from at least a similar space, like in your body, spiritual body. I haven't really thought about this question a lot, but... <laughs> Um, like, do you use the same muscles to write a poem versus writing a song? When you sit down to write, do you say, I'm going to write a poem and not a song, or a song and not a poem? Or does it, like, surprise you whenever it comes out of you? Hmm. I think a lot of times um, when I'm writing a song, I need to have text in front of me to go off of. So whether it's my own poem or, like, I'll just spread out poetry books in front of me, like Lucille Clifton, Nikki Giovanni, just to have text to pull from. Because I feel like I, I was taught poetry through a hip hop lens, and so I applied that to my music. And that's all about sampling, and all about kind of recontextualizing things and putting them in a new place. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of times my poetry might come from a more personal place, or almost like journal entries, but then I'll go back to that when I'm writing a song and kind of pull pieces together and collage it together in, that, in a way. Mm. I, I, at least once a month I sit down, I'm like, I'm gonna write a song. And then I'm like, you should do it. Should just watch a movie. <laughs> because of what am I doing? <laughs> Can I ask you about a song you were a collaborator on with Macklemore? Yeah. It was a smooth 17 minutes long. <laughs> So the song we're talking about is called White Privilege It was too. very long. It was, it was long. very long. How did that project long. come to be? Well, it started with poetry, to be honest. There's a, a woman named Hollis Wong Ware, who's a close collaborator with Macklemore, who's also a poet. And so she like, kind of pulled me into that project, and they wanted someone to write kind of a hook or just write on the song um, who had experience with organizing and mm. kind of working in the community. And it was really, it was a really interesting experience because we talked a lot, like the most that I've ever experienced in a collaboration. We spent hours just talking about, you know, reading articles and talking about current events, talking about protests we've been to, and it came out in a very organic way. And I don't think I could have done a song like that if it was just like, you know, come in the session, like, you need to have something written right away. It was very organic, and it was, the point of it was to be more than just a song, but something that would spark conversation, and um, we were able to do an event in Chicago that talked about white privilege and kind of unpacked what that is and had young people write about, you know, ideas like cultural appropriation and hip-hop and um, white people's participation in Black Lives Matter protests and all that. So it was, it was to me, it was more than just a song, which I think was a, a valuable part of that experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you perform it, do you perform all 23 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> I like we had to perform it on, um, on uh, Colbert, and we had to condense it. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I think they're probably like, okay, y'all, <laughs> you gotta make that a bridge. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So we are going to move on to a segment called. Y'all are so cute. (laughs) So this segment is called Pew Pew Pew. It's supposed to be our rapid fire question segment. Did I say that right? Yes. And we're trying to get better about being rapid fire. 
we're not there yet. Mm-hmm. So, CP2 so we are actually pressed for time right now. Oh yeah, oh, so exactly. this should be pretty rapid. See, I don't be caring about time. I'm just like the conversation's good. Let's just talk. Okay, <laughs> time but is relevant. So random questions. <laughs> um, what does your childhood smell like? Kraft macaroni and cheese. Yes. You got a fan. You got a fan in the back and the wings. Okay, okay. Um, do you have any problematic faves? Hmm. Also, if we're your problematic faves, you can say it. It's fine. We'll still love you. I hate love Miley Cyrus. Hmm. She's so talented. And when she was on The Voice, she was a really good coach. And I, like, I respect that as an educator. Mm. Uh-huh. So I'm really mad at myself. Okay. Okay. No, no. This is a safe space. Safe space, God Don't be mad at yourself. Also, you just made me look at her like a little bit differently. I'm like, well, Jamila thinks she got something. <laughs> Don't say it like that. <laughs> maybe maybe I should revisit. <laughs> if you could live inside a lemonade video for a year. Ooh. Which one would it be? <laughs> It would be honestly one of the poetry segments, the one where they're like Amanda, and, like they're all sitting on that porch. It's like mm-hmm. all those black women. It's the Warsan Shire. Yes. Part. Wait, wait, what? Which poetry part was this? Can you say a few words? Because I can't. No. Okay. Honestly. Fair. <laughs> I'll, I'll, completely fair. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't have it memorized. I just love that part on the porch. So y'all completely look it up. Fair. Good porch sit. Yes. <laughs> we got Google. What am I doing? My phone's in my pocket. I can look it up. You're right. Um, would you rather breathe fire or move objects with your eyes? Ooh. Definitely move objects with my eyes. Definitely. I have big ass eyes. And <laughs> They're so pretty. <laughs> I feel like they would be yeah, very powerful. powerful. Yes. Big Come things. on, mountains. <laughs> yeah. mountains. Mountains. I love that. <laughs> um, what is your comfort food? Mm, I think it's a drink. I love chai. Yeah. Ooh. And my best friend's cousin made me like the best like Pakistani chai. That was like oh snap! Yeah. So you have like the real, real, the real chai. chai. The real, real. I only have like celestial seasonings chai, <laughs> <laughs> which I don't think is a real thing. <laughs> It could be wrong. It could be wrong. I love your style and all your videos are just so. I, I want to live in them. How do you how do you think about your style? Like how do you pick a nail color? Mm. Ooh, yeah. Do you think of like, is it like mood? Is it mm-hmm. outfit? Is it like temperature, season? I think of it like um, my cousin once said like she picks a nail color that makes her feel calm or mm-hmm. like makes her feel excited, whatever she wants to feel. So that's kind of how I think of it. Ooh. Like you know, if I want to have a chill day, I'll go for like the nude colors. Okay. If I want to like turn up for like the lime green so yeah this is fascinating to me when i pick a nude color this is is now about me (laughs) hi but nude to me says like very like adult and grown that's right but that's chill to me yeah yeah when i want to like be messy like stressful (laughs) it's like i got bills like (laughs) what color can be bills (laughs) (laughs) every color means Oh my gosh. Um, if we had all the time in the world, we'd, we'd pepper you with all of these questions. I was trying to sneak another one in, but Heaven knew it, so she was like, no, we can't do this. <laughs> we are running out um, of time. You are a deer and a delight. Where can people find you and your work? I have a Twitter. It's uh, at Demilo, D U H M I L O, and I'm on Instagram at Jamila Woods. Um, and I have a tour, lots of touring coming up. You got Chicago dates? Yeah, I have a a show on July 13th right here in Talia Hall. And I'll also be at Pitchfork Festival uh, on the Sunday, July 16th. Nice. With Solange, yeah. (laughs) Okay, so I might do her homework. I see you, girl. (laughs) Um, Jamila, thank you so much. Please come back literally whenever you want to. And thank thank you. you. Seriously. Thank you for having me. Um, 
Hey, heaven, guess what time it is again? What time is it? Baby, come through. <laughs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I'm going to buy around for a song that I just learned about called You Write. Okay. Spelled you right, you, the letter U, right, R I T E, as if Rite Aid sold fucks <laughs> and was all out. All out of fucks to give, you right. Okay, I'm into it. So, it, this song is by a duo called They. They, period. It has a. I'm sorry, wait, quick question. They, period. They, they're called they, period, or they're called they, and there's a period. It has a vanity them. punctuation mark, which we can do with I'm into it. I like vanity <laughs> punctuation marks. They're cute. Marks. I like them. I really don't even know what the song is about, but I have a personal <laughs> interpretation of what it means to me. Okay. It belongs to me solidly in the category of songs I call petty jams. What is a petty jam, Heaven? when I want to jam to some music that helps me feel petty, but not enact petty. <laughs> you just keep oh. it in your head, you know? You jam in your head to the petty. You're like, so yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, kind of like that, when I've that. had a bad day, and I'm like, let me listen to some gospel mm-hmm. so I don't punch somebody in the face. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Petty jam. <laughs> For me, an example of this is Kendrick's Humble. Ooh, be humble. I have frequently thought to myself, bitch, be humble. I'll still sit down. I have said it out loud. Nah, don't do that. Don't do this that. This song is perfect for that because it has a, a refrain that's just, bitch, you're right. <laughs> and I feel like that applies in so many petty situations. Especially the one where somebody you don't like says something smart mm. or something that you agree with. Mm. And you can't front on it. And you're like, you're right. Bitch, you're right. Bitch, you're right. Okay. Okay. Or perhaps I've been watching a lot of cable news lately. Why? And... Don't do that. Stop it. Stop. Stop. And Stop. every time they mention Michael Flynn, which is a lot because he's under so many investigations. <laughs> <laughs> the current count, I think, is 32. <laughs> but you can Google they it. keep playing the footage of him at the Republican National Convention where he's talking about lock her up. And the exact quote he uses, excuse me. <clears throat> If I did a tenth of what she did, she being Hillary Clinton, if I did a tenth of what Hillary Clinton did, I would be in jail today. Let's, let's play that jam right, right quick right now, right now. Jam. I'm into it. Petty Jam. I'm into it. I like this because your cat is also named Petty. It is true. My cat is named Petty. It's true. Her cat is also named Negro Cat, so <laughs> Petty's got two names. <laughs> if two we had names. a show called Friends and our version of Smelly Cat is Negro Cat. Negro Cat. Exactly. Negro You're cat. welcome. What are they feeding you? <laughs> Y'all seen two episodes of Friends. I don't know if I got that melody right. Okay. Let's see, who are you buying a round for? My rounds are super quick. I said rounds because it's two. So I decided a little bit ago that I'm going to buy a round for apps that help me to chill out and relax. Okay. okay. So before the show, I was in the green room and I just bought a brand new iPad. Ugh iPad? iPad. Yep. <laughs> you know what? Okay. <laughs> I bought an iPad. <laughs> um, and the first thing I did was download coloring apps and also mm. paint by number apps. Let me tell you about anxiety, right? <laughs> so one of the, the biggest and most effective calming tools for me is an activity that is just repetitive where I don't have to think about the next thing. I don't have to think about the decision. I don't have to like, I'm not responsible for anything. I just do this one thing over and over and over, which a lot of people are not into. I get it. However, I like things like transcription. (laughs) I love listening to words and typing them. 
it's fun for me. It can't chews relate. me out. Can't relate. Nobody can. It's fine. <laughs> I love crocheting. Crocheters in the house. Repetitive motion over and over and over. Mm. So I've got like three good apps that is just like you you just like push a part of the screen and I mean it's it's color by numbers. You know what that means. That's the three <laughs> apps if this is your jam. Number one is cross stitch world. Similar to paint by number, not exactly paint by number, same deal. Number two, can't remember the name of it, I'm very sorry. Number three <laughs> All right. Number three is called Sandbox. They're free. You just you just sit down and you just your brain goes on autopilot. And this this is the way that I meditate because I cannot meditate normally because <laughs> my brain just won't shut the fuck up and be still. Um, so download these two apps and the one app that I can't remember the name of. Um, and my other round is for the Midwest. Aww. Y'all, it made me. So so mad. I see you waving your phone. I don't know who that. Yes, 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 telephones. It made me so angry during the election when everybody was talking about the Midwest as if people don't live there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, flyover states. They they don't know enough to do to vote this way. They don't do X, Y, and Z. And I'm just like, fuck you. You don't want to talk about me. Like I'm not in the room. You right, Trace. You right. You know what I'm saying? You right. The Midwest. First of all, has better food than the East Coast. I'ma just say it. I'ma just say it. The people are nice. The people are kind. It's true. You're welcome. <laughs> See, look, thank you. Somebody just said thank you. <laughs> Shout out to the Midwest. It's just, it's just the it's just a good place. It's a pure place full of actual people. And I can't believe that we talk about the Midwest like it's not impactful, like it's not mm. important. Mm. Like it hasn't contributed anything to the world or to mm. this nation. Oh, oh, fucking Obama <laughs> is a fucking Midwestern ass man and he knows it. And I love it. It's great. So, Color by Numbers and the Midwest. Yeah. That's my round. physically cannot believe that we did it. I never can. I paced for 20 minutes backstage and I was like, I, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Tracy, we paced. Hey. Okay. Um, thank you so, so much. First of all, to the city of Chicago. Yes. For having us. Yes. Um, thank you so much to Dr. Eve Ewing. To Sister... To Sister Jamila Woods. Yes. And of of course, the fantastic youth performers from Kumba Link. Yeah. Thank you so much. For those listening to the podcast, we're going to put some videos of Kumba Links on our Facebook page, also into our newsletter, which true, we will true. give you a link to very, very soon so you can see what they do. We Amazing. Also wanna, we also want to give a big shout out to WBEZ's podcast, Passport Series, for bringing us here to Chicago. Yes, indeed. Thank Thanks you so to much team. to the team, Tyler Green, MK Julian, Ashley Thorpe, Haley Carlson, and Shelly Steffens. Thank you so much. Thank you to Talia Hall and the whole crew here for making this possible. Yes. Hey. This is a beautiful theater. And for our first Chicago show, it's not too sure. Hey. Ring, ring, ring. Also, shout out to the pause squad. Pause. This live show was produced by Eleanor Kagan, who is here, and Nina Pasek, who is here. Shout out to y'all. Thanks, moms. With production support from Julia Ferlin, Meg Kramer, Alex Laughlin, and Agaranesh Chagre, who were all in New York City, so sad they couldn't be here. Thank you to our in-house musicians, Miss Jean Gray. You can follow her on Twitter. At Jean Greasy and Don Will of the Almighty Tanya Morgan. You can follow him at Don Will. And our brand new church announcement organ music that we got like yesterday <laughs> just for y'all. Shout out to Kwame Brent Pierce of New York for that. Um, shout out to Heaven. Shout out to Tracy. You know what? I'm not about to get emotional. We just um, <laughs> just keep it going. I can't do this. I can't. We're not. We're not today. <laughs> follow Heaven on Twitter at Heaven Rants. Follow me at Brokey McPoverty. Um, uh, 
Email us at another us, round. Facebook us, etc. At another round. round Facebook.com slash another round. Another mm-hmm. round at Buzzfeed.com, etc. 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 Rate us on iTunes. Tell a friend. Nominate us for a Nobel Peace Prize. Nominate us for a Nobel Peace Prize. Letter. <laughs> you can literally nominate anybody anyone, for a Nobel, anyone. A Nobel Peace Prize. Fact. Yes. Fun fact. Um, you can subscribe to our newsletter at Buzzfeed.com slash another round slash newsletter. It's so good. <laughs> Who subscribes to the newsletter? You're welcome. Don't you want to be counted among this mass? Subscribe <laughs> to the newsletter. Um, we have merch. Oh, we do have merch. We have t-shirts and tote bags. They say things like speak on it. Hey. Oh, remember earlier we were talking about how uh, men ruin t-shirts? The speak on it t-shirt, whenever I wear it, a woman stops me and she's like, speak on it. Hmm. So you just kind of like own it, right? And I'm like, bitch, yes. <laughs> That's like in Louis. So if you want an empowering shirt. If you want to make friends. Yeah, I mean, it's going to get you harassed, too, because men are... Dang, wow. I know. I didn't want to pause it. It's like, you know... (laughs) Drink some water, take your meds, call your person, y'all. And one last time before we go, let's welcome back to the stage, Kumbali. Woo!